Welcome back to the LSS Holdings weekly YouTube series. Today we're going to talk about indoor air quality and airborne disinfection for schools. This week the topic is much deeper and actually requires more uh, discussion for you individually or for your buildings and the project that you're uh, concerned with. But we wanted to focus on uh, airborne disinfection and we wanted to talk about schools in general with the more concern about bringing schools online and that uh, very precious population within the building. LSS Holdings is a pure play company rooted in life safety services. Uh, we are comprised of our Hughes Environmental Division, Environmental Facility Cleaning, Duct Cleaning, Ceiling and Rafter Cleaning, Combustible Dust Remediation, our LSS Life Safety Services Division, Fire and Smoke Damper Inspection Repair, Fire Door Inspections, Fire Stopping, and UVC Light Solutions. And now bringing you in May of 2020, SafeNetics, the safety e-learning certification platform, integrating inspection technology coming in May 2020. The topics of this presentation, again, are going to be high level and require deeper discussion about your facility and your goals. But today we're gonna to help you understand the impact of air quality, indoor air quality, understanding how your HVA system plays a role as a pathogen reservoir and disseminator, understand how HVA systems and indoor air quality solutions are a combination of solutions, including filtration and disinfection, and we're going to better understand the available solutions for control for airborne infections like COVID-19 that we're fighting now. Water and air, we take them for granted. We drink those true quarts of water per day. We worry, we carry those drinking bottles, and, but we breathe 20,000 quarts of air per day. But do we worry about that air? Have we questioned the air that we breathe? Do we care? What do we do? We've marginalized sick building syndrome and, and thought that we know better. Meanwhile, we're missing a very important uh, part of the equation to providing the best life, quality of life. World Health Organization uh, states that the effects of poor air quality are air pollution is now the fourth highest cause of death worldwide. Even in relatively clean areas, life expectancies are shortened by 8.6 months on average due to pollution from human activities. According to the US Environmental Protection Agency, air quality inside the home is often two to five, to five times worse than it is outdoors. What's the potential of annual healthcare savings and productivity gains from improving indoor air environments? Well, they estimated the annual economic costs of common respiratory illnesses, and this is reported in 2020 dollars from this 1997 report, is that resulted in 240 million lost work days, 160 million additional days of restricted activity, 54 billion additional days of restricted activity, 54 billion dollars or 210 dollars per person in healthcare costs, 105 billion or 400 dollars per person in total costs. So that's 3,000 billion, 3 trillion, 8,500 million per person as a result of COVID-19. And it just continues to grow. Azure's position is that many infectious diseases are transmitted through the inhalation of airborne infectious particles termed droplet nuclei. Airborne infectious particles can be disseminated through buildings, including ventilation systems. Airborne infectious disease transmission can be reduced using dilution ventilation, specific in-room flow regimes, room pressure differentials, personalized and source capture ventilation, filtration, and UVGI. Bioaerosols and droplet nuclei. Larger droplets fall to the ground. Smaller droplets, one to five microns in diameters, evaporate and become droplet nuclei. They remain suspended in the air for hours and days, traveling long distance or recirculating within a building envelope. Droplet nuclei suspension is illustrated below in these two diagrams, but droplet nuclei settling in a calm room takes approximately 4.2 hours 
to fall a distance of two meters. The presence of viral RNA in air droplets and aerosols indicates the possibility of viral transmission. The transfer of droplet nuclei can be one cough, which generates 3,000 droplet nuclei. Talking for five minutes can generate 3,000 droplets of nuclei. Singing can generate 3,000 droplet nuclei in one minute. Sneezing generates tens of thousands of droplet nuclei, which can spread to individuals up to 10 feet away. Initial velocities can be up to 1,000 uh, meters per second. Here's an illustration of these invisible viruses and bacteria as they're traveling through your uh, air handling system. Moisture on the coils is also present in your in indoor air quality or air handling system. And dirt is on the coils. Moisture on the coils. All of these are the perfect environment to grow, as you see in this photograph here, mold on the AC coil. Let's talk about biofilm formation. It's very simple. Uh, biofilm formation is just three steps. It attaches, it grows, and it detaches and spreads. Biofilms are composed of different microisms adhering to surfaces producing a matrix composed of polysaccharides, proteins, and nucleic acids. This material allows the biofilm to stick together and develop to attach communities. Biofilms will form anywhere water is present and are typically attached to all untreated HVAC coils and drain pans. And the life of a biofilm imparts protection from penetration of outside forces such as antimicrobial agents and offers cross-species genetic transfer to enhance survival. It's getting stronger and bigger and growing. So these um, MERV uh, calculations are demonstrating how effective your HPA filter is or your HEPA filter. Um, the filter loads, and this is just an example, are 24 by 24, and, and that equals 800 CFM. Average particulate concentrate CF air is 100,000. Particulates confronting the filter, 80 million. Filter efficiency rate, 99.97%. Particles eluding the filter, those little guys, 24,000 at a minimum. So microorganisms need to be addressed, and here's the basics. How big are they? They're small enough to go through those HEPA filters. So HEPA filters alone are not enough to protect your building. So mold is one to five microns. Bacteria, 0.5 microns. And viruses are 10 to 750 millimicrons. Micron is 1 25th or 4 thousandths of an inch. How fast do the bacteria multiply? Well, under ideal conditions, bacteria and viruses can double every 20 minutes. Therefore, in one day, the formula becomes so that in 24 hours, we have 272 or approximately seven times 1,013 or 70 trillion organisms pass passing through your system. Mold multiplies a little bit slower every six hours. It takes 18 days to get 70 trillion organisms. So ASHRAE, it has a design manual standardization for ultraviolet radiation. UVGI can be effective in reducing the virulence of microisms and therefore reducing infection rates. So never before has it been more critical that we look at how we combine these technologies together to be able to get the best outcome for clean air inside of the building. So we have ionization and oxid oxidation, um, and we talk about uh, how that is demonstrated and against robust organisms and vegetative organisms and how they can re be recovered unharmed using ESPS, ESP as a collection device. ESP devices form ozone, and to a lesser extent, other oxygen and nitrogen byproducts. In fact, though negative polarity, corona results in more advantageous operations, much more ozone is produced than with positive corona, as much as five to six times as much. Accumulation of charged dust particles will result in significantly increased deposits on indoor surfaces, and these effects are more significant with whole room 
ionization technologies that use devices that do not also collect the charged particles. So let's talk about COVID-19, SARS, COV-2 virus. It's a respiratory virus. It spreads via respiratory droplets and it attacks the lungs and the immune system and it kills via secondary infection, much like influenza. Less airborne viral load and secondary infections translates into increased survival rates. Public health reports on the application of UVGI to control airborne diseases. Integration of ventilation, filtration, and UVGI is the wise approach to airborne disease mitigation for the entire building. The final intention is for energy efficient, biologically effective control. Effective indoor air quality strategies, filtration, dilution, ventilation, and UVGI require initial commissioning as well as maintenance and monitoring. Design effective UVGI requires understanding microbial species present and using significantly high radiance given for time and dosage. Mathematical modeling is VIX for most pathogenic microisms. So your facility will need to be evaluated to get the best outcome to install these devices. And when you're installing these devices, you will also see an increased energy savings. HVAC uses 40 to 60% of building energy. Dirty coils use up to 30% more energy. So it has an environmental impact and it also impacts increased costs. Biofilm effects on HVAC coils, drain pans, and filters. Insulators reducing heat exchange and efficiency. When we find these biofilms on insulators, we see a reduced heat exchange efficiency. We see reduced airflow as the airflow is obstructed. And we see the reservoir as, a, a, again, a petri dish or an amplification device for pathogens. When we have these situations and these cultures present, we have reduced HVAC efficiency as, um, and as it covers the cooling surface. It creates insulation, requiring colder coolant to achieve the same air temperature, just making your system work harder and harder as these systems build up and block airspace on coils. And it requires more energy to derive the fan and to get the same airflow. It blocks the drains, <clears throat> creates maintenance problems that are hard to tackle, especially as we don't look at them every day, requires um, cleaning mostly, uh, either from your own team or outside sources, and it increases your labor costs and management. So, as you know, we're recommending and we will, uh, we're talking about sterile air energy solutions, which are science-based solutions that provide electrical energy savings of up to 15% when um, installed on your HVAC systems, reduce fan chiller and chiller pump use, and Clean coils also improve heat transfer, airflow, and compressor runtime, operational efficiency, and thermal comfort. So we are including here the McGill University UVGI study. And they're talking about the effect of ultraviolet germicidal lights installed in office ventilation systems, and those effects on workers' health, and this is pre-pandemic, on the well-being in, in, in this application. They performed a double-blind study with a multiple crossover trial with 771 participants in an office building in Montreal, Canada, where UVGI was alternated off for 12 weeks and then turned off for four. Operation of the UVGI resulted in 99% reduction of microbial and endotoxin concentrations on irradiated surfaces within the ventilation, within the ventilation systems. Uh, use of UVGI was associated with significantly fewer work-related symptoms overall. These adjusted odds ratios as well as respiratory and uh, mucus symptoms, that was non-use. So there was a 26% overall reduction of absenteeism. In this study, they installed sterile air UVC on downstream side of fans and perform same air handled independent tests for 60 days after using the sterile air solution. They had a 992 CFM gain, 
they had 0.07 inch WD static pressure reduction, net cooling capacity of 208%, a BTU gain, and their savings in just the first year was $4,639. So their ROI was eight months, which is extremely impressive and significant. As we talked about the, the school population, there are um, great studies as applied to uh, kindergartens and pre-K. Reduction in absenteeism, 50% for teachers, 25% per pupil. We're happy to get you these additional details and case studies that explain this in greater detail so that you can better understand the savings as well as the uh, greater well-being. We also have information on the Iolani School in Honolulu, where they saw 99.8 reduction in mold growth, elimination of odors, improved air quality, indoor air quality, improved teacher and, and student attendance, and they saw an $8,000 per year maintenance savings and reduced energy costs. Again, significant payback as well as a, a, a much improved uh, experience inside the building for everybody. LSS, again, uses sterile air, and we're able to calculate your ROI and show you less than a year ROI for installing these systems into your building immediately. There's immediate gains, reduced energy costs, reduced absenteeism, reduced airborne infections, legal liability, elimination of significant microisms in the reservoir, reduced water cost, extended HVAC lifespan and less maintenance, as well as peace of mind as we all are seeing a brand new day as it relates to this pandemic and how it affects the buildings that we live and work in. Using sterile air, we've also uh, are proud to, pre to present uh, RIK or rapid install kits, which make the um, application much easier to install, especially as all of you are concerned about bringing in vendors into your facility. This, these solutions make it much easier and uh, much more available to being able to get your system online using UVGI quicker and safer. We are operating 24 seven to meet all and any of your COVID-19 response needs. We're operating 800 lines at both LSS Life Safety Services, at 888-675-4519 and at Hughes Environmental, 888-845-3952 as well as uh, our info at lifesafetyservices.com and info at hughesenvironmental.com and additional information on both our websites for our companies as well as these weekly posted YouTube sessions that you are uh, able to access through our LSS Holdings YouTube website. Again, thank you so much for your time. We know how precious it is. and We know how important the message is. So please remember, with any questions, reach out to us at any time, and we're happy to answer your questions and your, and your um, stories of success and uh, share those with our customers and our future customers. Thank you so much, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.